Hi guys, Sean here. Let's unpack the Surface Laptop Studio. So is Microsoft Surface a design company for hinges and just unique designs? Because it's starting to feel like that. And yet this new form factor for the Surface line, it really makes sense. Um, I have the Surface Book 3 here and a lot of the research probably showed that users didn't eject the screen and turn it around and place it back down. They probably saw a lot of the users, especially myself, guilty, um, just left it connected. It was more convenient this way. And one of the largest drawbacks of having an, a screen that ejects is that you disconnect from the um, GPU that's in here. So all the graphical power that could make games run on here, well, you lost that continuity because you um, decrease that power by having it just separately here and a lot of apps weren't compatible when you ejected the screen. So you traded off uh, the most powerful Surface laptop. The minute you eject it, you get a very strong touch screen and, and very thin iPad-like device, although running Windows, and are very more powerful and efficient in different ways, but it just um, didn't have the GPU power or the additional um, hard drive storage or the battery. Well, the Surface Laptop Studio changed that. So let's go over um, one of the most uh, featured uh, designs over there. It's its new hinge. And so I've dealt with a lot of thin screen devices before, a lot of unique form factors and cable management or just having durable cables. That is so important. Um, on my LG wallpaper TV, for example, I broke it just by remounting it and moving it from one room to another, and it has very sensitive cables. Now, it says in the Microsoft Mechanics breakdown of the Surface um, Laptop Studio that the cables are durable enough to withstand 180 degrees of bend, which is within the line of how it's designed. It's designed to go down. And we, we've seen this before in some uh, different laptops out there, Acer, Asus, um, in terms of how they've implemented it, and they've kind of looked, let's just say, awkward because the screen kind of juts out and there's still that square frame that you see. But here, they said they took inspiration from the different surface line of devices. And so this looks like a, a conglomeration of the Surface Studio, obviously, the Surface Laptop and the Surface Pro line because you have that hinge and it kind of bends down all the way closer to you. But in many ways, it also reminds me of the iPad, the iPad Pro, where and its keyboard, where it goes right up until that touchpad. So you have screen and touchpad, and it goes right in front of you, but then it goes the extra mile by leaning all the way down. So a lot of the innovations there that the Laptop Studio has is that new hinge form factor, and it now has the larger, or the largest, trackpad, still 10-point multi-touch there. So when you have the screen bent that far, you have the choice from either just using your very, very uh, powerful trackpad, larger one, or just touching the screen itself. And if you go all the way down, well, then you still um, can go ahead and take the pen that's now stored under the keyboard there and with the new Surface Pen 2 that has improved haptic feedback. So with that new pen, it also leads into the improvements on the screen and how fast the rapid response is and the new Windows 11 updates that are very pen and touch input friendly. So it's a combination of Windows 11 aligning with the new hardware form factors and just using Windows Ink and, and the pen. So it's a very interesting note that Panos, the lead of the Surface team, is now part in charge of leading the Windows 11 update in the OS that's coming out as well. And we're seeing this all merge together. So what's in, one of the cool parts of what I've seen in the Surface Laptop Studio is that the fans, the fans look like the back of Surface Laptops and it's right on the bottom of the device. But when it's sandwiched all the way down, it kind of looks like just a very smashed device. But I think that once you're leaning over it, adding some weight, using that palm, having that palm rejection, the newest Surface Pen, doing your colors, I think that you really won't mind what it looks like staring at it from the side um, because you're able to go in and get your work done. 
Now, they talked about in the Microsoft Mechanics video of uh, using the human design factors lab, and I've actually had a chance to visit that multiple times just to see how people use the device in the real world. And especially in a post-COVID, a Zoom central, Microsoft Teams central world, they showed that in your home office, usually you have this docked. And as much as I love having to eject this and using this as a tablet, I've mainly used this and connected it to an ultra wide monitor that I might have had or a dual screen setup, triple screen setup, my own uh, mechanical keyboard and webcam setup and the newest Surface Dock 2. And having and loving all those accessories, it's so great to just plug it all in, be powerful and then have this multi display. But it's always a shame that I couldn't use this laptop screen or this keyboard input or just all the nice touches that they've included in here as part of the setup. Well, now that's not a problem anymore because you just go ahead and plug it into your all-in-one setup and you can still use this as your central point as you can have it lean down and be part of something you can touch or something you can draw on because chances are you're not going to have external monitors that will be as touch and pen Windows Ink ready. So let's sum up the form factor. I really like this design. I think it spiritually just makes sense and it makes sense why this came out versus the Surface Book 4. I don't know exactly what they'll do next with that series of lines, but to have something that naturally comes in closer to you that represents more of touch and pen input stylus. For those who out there, including myself, that don't use the pen input too much, because we usually use our fingers, we're used to the iOS systems, or we think that the pens were not you know, artists that drawing. Well, if this encourages it and makes you want to design it and it's conveniently packed there and stored, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want to um, eject the pen out and have this cool pop-up uh, where it shows you all the pen compatible apps out there and start relearning how to draw, relearning how to write with Windows Inks and utilizing those features because now it's just so naturally put there. So uh, let's go over some other improvements. Um, this time the Surface Laptop Studio has two Thunderbolt 4 ports with 40 gigabits per second. So that would be great for all your USB-C accessories, all your rear docks. Um, and then on the internals, you have your Intel Core 11, Core H, you have your RTX 3050 Ti, and those are in great shortage right now. Um, they even have the RTX version for those who want it for business, so possibly could be a little bit cheaper for those who aren't going to game as hard, but i definitely go for the RTX 3050 um, for the ray tracing. Interestingly enough, they used it for some AI applications for um, NVIDIA's and they showed some photorealistic app where you could just use some abstract, almost Microsoft Paint level of designs, but really, I just want the most up-to-date graphics and art Ray tracing is the next uh, biggest graphical improvement for games, and it's great that it's coming in such a powerful and versatile device. Okay, so moving forward, the screen is still your three by two aspect ratio, it's so 14.4 inches. And I think it's great that it's not actually like 4K 4K because you don't wanna be pushing out too much pixel density, um, especially when you're running your games, you actually want to kind of close out some of those settings when you run the games. Um, and so. Let's move forward to the camera array by itself. It says it has bigger sensors, and that's really important for Microsoft Teams. Teams itself can already track your face while you're moving, but this one can actually show your face and actually use some AI, it says, to guess, have some better visualizations of your face while you're chatting. And who doesn't want the best on-screen presence when most of us now are still work from home? Now the Omnisonic speakers, which you've seen in the Surface Laptop and supposed to improve the audio, this has quad Omnisonic speakers and has Dolby Atmos and Vision, Dolby Vision as well. So now your audio improvements, there's just a consistency line. Does the screen look very clean with Dolby Vision? Yes, does it sound very great with Dolby Sound? It sounds excellent. So this device has 19 hours of battery life with the Core i5 and about 18 hours of battery life with the Core i7. So they're still calling it all day battery life. Um, they didn't go over the weight or the specs. So I feel like it just covers this device. It's supposed to be a very powerful Surface device um, in spirit of the Surface Studio where that hinge came all the way down like an architect and you could lean on it. 
but a little more portable friendly and entered the world of like your heavier productivity books like the Surface Book. And it's supposed to own that space. And so the only area that this doesn't um, cover is kind of like that last touch where you could eject the screen and have it portable, where that's where the Surface Pro line or Pro X line really uh, shines. It doesn't cover just the light. Imagine if this went all the way down like the Surface U do, but you could also unhinge it from it. Imagine if I had that Surface Book detachment style where I'm trading GPU life for just the beauty of the screen. But probably that's just not a use case for this. You probably want to just conserve all your power because for this audience anyways, we're all about plugging in and getting the max power and productivity possible and more or less running our Adobe Suite or our, our Steam library of games. So very interesting form factor in this uh, device. I really think it's going to be a hit and probably the main work device for those who are your Surface enthusiasts out there. Um, Everyone, let me know what you think about the Surface Laptop Studio. Do you think this is the right direction? Do you think it's a new category line? Do you think it's going to kill off the Surface Book? What do you think about the Surface Duo 2 that's coming out? Um, and is there any features or requests that you want in the Surface uh, Laptop Studio? Um, and how are you going to get your hands on it? Okay, well, that's my uh, initial impressions of this device. Um, let me know what you think below. I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye guys.